when we're dealing with VAT, value added tax, we need to calculate the correct amount of VAT that the business has to pay. We also identified, or the internal auditor identified, the following errors and omissions which must still be brought into account to calculate the correct VAT amount payable. The VAT amount payable has, is, it's a payable, so it has a credit balance of 43,820. Just a quick question here. Is it possible for the VAT control account to have a debit balance? And the answer is yes. If your VAT control account has a debit balance here, here's your VAT control account, and there's a debit balance of 50,000 Rand, what would be one explanation for this debit balance of 50,000 Rand? Think about it. It could mean the business has just started, right? We haven't started selling goods as yet, so we've purchased goods, and the VAT that we've paid to our suppliers, right? The input VAT amounts to 50,000 Rand, so clearly you can see that because we haven't started selling as yet, we haven't collected VAT from our, from the end users, and at this stage, SARS owes us an amount of 50,000 Rand. So can your VAT control account have a debit balance? The answer is yes, it can have a debit balance, and keep that in mind when you're dealing with a VAT question. Okay, so now with regards to VAT, we are told we have sales invoices that were omitted from the debtor's journal. Sales invoices were omitted. The amount that was omitted was 10,833 Rand. So clearly, we are calculating the amount that we owe to SARS or that SARS, amounts to, or that SARS owes to us. And therefore, if we look at our calculation, here we go. There's the opening balance that was payable, so it's on the credit side. 43,820. We are told in this one year that the sales amount including VAT, that means the 10,833 Rand, the 10,000, the 10,833 Rand is inclusive of VAT. Right, now you want the VAT amount. Please, guys, remember these ratios or these calculations. When you want the inclusive amount, it's always times 15 over 115. Why? Because the amount includes the VAT, right? The moment you see something that says excluding VAT, you know it's times 15 over 100. Okay, so keep that in mind. Inclusive of that, 15 over 115, because that amount includes the VAT. So you do that calculation, 10,833 Rand times 15 over 115, and you get an answer of 1413, right? So that amount means that you now Oh, that amount to SARS, right? So double entry, you're going to debit debtors control with a full amount, credit, credit your sales and credit your VAT control with the amount of VAT. So in every transaction that you are doing, what is important for you to note is firstly identify what's the full amount. In this case here, it was a credit sales invoice that we omitted. So you're going to debit your debtor with a full amount, credit what? Sales with 100% and credit your VAT control with the VAT amount of 1413. Clear? Good. You are told that damaged goods returned to suppliers excluding VAT amounted to 18,600. Okay? So we return goods to our suppliers excluding VAT. Step number one, take your 18,600, right? So we take the 18,600 times the 15% and it gives you an amount of 2790, right? So here we go. 
There's my 2790. Once again, what's my entry? I'm returning goods. Damaged goods return to suppliers, excluding VAT. You debit creditors control with the full amount. Credit your trading stock with the stock amount that you were returning and credit your VAT control amount with the VAT amount which works out to 2,790. So important here guys is for you to identify firstly the calculation, what's my VAT amount and secondly what effect does it have on my VAT control. Is, do I owe SARS more or do I owe SARS less? Keeping this in mind that this account on the debit side is your input on the credit side is what you owe to SARS. SARS owes you, you owe to SARS. Or, or you can do it in the form of a calculation. The choice is entirely yours, right? The next transaction we, we are told here is that VAT on discounts received from suppliers amounted to 756. Now, obviously, once again, you are receiving a discount from a supplier. This means, therefore, that if you look at your entry, you're going to debit your creditors control with the full amount, credit discount received, credit your VAT control, 756. There's the discount that we have, we are going to be receiving, right? So obviously, when we initially, when we process the entry regarding the creditor, it was shown as an input, we were owing that money, that that was the amount that we, we when we, let me do, that again, do this again. When we, in, the initial entry was saying, SARS, you owe us this amount because that's what we bought on credit. But because we're receiving a discount now, we're not entitled to that full amount. Therefore, it's actually a reduction on the amount that SARS owes us. Therefore, a credit of 756. But the easiest way to remember, take the full amount. Debit credit is control, full amount. We don't owe them that money anymore. Credit discount received with a discount amount, credit your VAT control with the VAT amount. VAT on bad debts recovered, 112. So this was monies that we had received, right? It was, it, that was the actual VAT amount on the, on the bad debts recovered. Once again, debit bank with the full amount, credit your bad debts recovered, and credit your VAT control with the amount of VAT which is 112, there we go, there's the 112, okay? I think we left out one, yes we did. VAT on sundry business expenses, so they're giving you the amount, the amount of VAT that we had paid, that was input VAT, and the VAT was 6818, so clearly you can see here that that one will be a debit to my VAT control because that's the amount of VAT that I have paid. I can claim it back from SARS and therefore I'm, in, I'm debiting my VAT control account, meaning that's the amount that SARS owes to me, right? And the last one that we have there is the VAT on bad debts was recorded on the wrong side of the VAT account. How much? 92 Rand. Let's look at the treatment thereof. Okay. If you have if you have a VAT on bad debts, right? So clearly you can see you're going to credit your debtor's control with the full amount, right? Because the debtor's not going to owe you that amount anymore. You're going to debit the bad debts with the bad debts amount, and you're going to debit the VAT control with the amount of the VAT on the bad debts. But because it went to the wrong side, because it went to the wrong side, clearly you can see Again, you've got to double it for it to have the desired effect. And therefore, a debit on the VAT control of 184, how do we get that figure? Because it went on the wrong side initially, the amount was 92 Rand, I double it to get the correct amount. Okay, so there we have the VAT story. Inventory, let's try, in the time that we have left, just to give you a brief overview of the inventory that you're supposed to know. Remember, you get stock validation. This is how do you value your stock at the end of the financial year? It is valued in terms of three methods of stock validation. Value. So you're either going to debit, oh, sorry, you're either going to use the FIFO method or 
the weighted average method or the specific identification method. So those are stock valuations. All that you are doing is you're valuing, valuing your stock in terms of those three, one of those three methods. Then you get stock systems. When stock systems are being talked about, we're talking about the perpetual method or the periodic method. In this one here, guys, remember, what do we talk about? You talk about perpetual where you keep a running record of stock, so you have a cost of sales account. You, at every point of sale, you are also recording the cost of sale. That's what we mean by perpetual, continuous method of stock. Periodic, it's your, your stock is calculated on a periodic method. If you want to work out your cost of sales, you're going to work it out at the end of the period. Now, both of these have advantages and disadvantages. Please go through the advantages and disadvantages of your periodic stock systems and your perpetual inventory systems. Remember, in any questions, what are you, what are, what are you going to be asked to do? The value of stock, number of items on hand, missing units, calculate your cost of sales, calculate your gross profit. Your indicators are important here. Your stock turnover rate, your stock holding period, your markups, and also the problem solving questions that you get on inventories. So once again, you will notice when we're dealing with inventory valuation, very often you are asked to calculate the number of missing units or calculate the number of items on hand or calculate the cost of sales or calculate your gross profit. Make sure you know your indicators before tomorrow morning. You, again, you are given a formula sheet, but you must identify them and know exactly which indicators will be asked for. <laughs>